What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of my next gen career mode. This is episode number 12 and uh, we start today's episode off by once again seeing that Sigurdsson has declined a contract and an offer to join us here uh, in Germany. And that's a real shame because I really would like to get a hold of him but uh, he just doesn't seem to want to leave London and um, it's it's a bit of a shame really because I'd love to get him for £2 million. Pounds, I think that could be quite a, good, a big steal for us really but uh, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, Wolves have once again rejected a bid for Sacco so if we can't get hold of Sigurdsson I'd definitely like to get Sacco instead because although Sacco, I mean they're both listed as left midfielders, I'd rather have Sigurdsson in the centre but uh, even so, uh, I think Sacco would do very well on the, uh, on the wing for us but we'll have to wait and see but uh, also our goalkeeper comes to us and says he, uh, he wants more play time which is hilarious because he's only like 61 overall so he's never really going to get into my side very often but uh, anyway, uh, we see now that Sigurdsson has finally accepted his contract ha uh, has as has Herman. So Herman comes in for £5 million, Sigurdsson comes in for £2 million, or I thought it was going to come in, but I didn't have the money to complete the deal, but as soon as I went and uh, adjusted the budget, we could finally afford him. So Sigurdsson finally accepts his contract, uh, Herman accepts his on the first go. That means we've made two signings in the space of a couple of minutes, and I'm very, very happy with that, because as I said in the last episode, we hadn't replaced Ben Hatira. I was getting a little bit worried that transfer deadline day may end before I'd be able to replace Ben Hatira, but now we've got two new players Sigurdsson and Herman and I'm very happy with them both because I think that you know Herman may have been a bit of an overspend he he cost us five million pounds he's only valued at 3.8 million pounds so that might be a bit of an overspend really but he's only 22 23 years old so he'll grow into a very good player you know and Sigurdsson at two million pounds for me that's a bargain you know because with those listed as a left midfielder 74 overall those stats have him perfectly set up to play center mid so you know I'm happy with that deal and um, Herman of course he's absolutely rapid 77 overall so I'm happy with both for those deals you know seven million pounds for those two players yes quite expensive but I think they're going to be worth every single penny so Herman and Sigerson join the club it's going to be hard to fit all these players into the side but we'll have to do our best and uh, there you go uh, we also got a transfer offer for our centre back there and uh, I think we accepted it or put a counter offer in anyway but it looks like he'll be on his way regardless uh, before we took on Frankfurt here for today's uh, first and only game and uh, just before I start as well I do want to say that I know the last two episodes have only had one game each and this one only has one game as well that is obviously because of the transfer window. Um, I, I've said this a few times before. When the transfer windows come round, because there's so much business getting done, it's very hard not to have the videos just go insanely long, you know, because otherwise you get like two or three games and then like an absolute ton of transfer business and you're looking at like 25 minutes per episode. So that's exactly why I've decided to only put one games in uh, whilst the transfer windows are around. Sometimes there may be two games, but usually there'll only be one. But uh, seeing as there's loads of business and most people do like the business side of career mode anyway, I think that's perfectly fine. But Anyway, we took on Frankfurt here away from home, and the first chance this game would fall in the ninth minute as Herman goes down the right hand side. Really good chance here on his debut for a debut goal, but unfortunately, he ends up smacking the top of the bar and the ball goes out for a goal kick. So it would have been lovely to see Herman get a debut goal, but unfortunately, it wasn't to be, and it was still 0 0. But in the 31st minute, he see Frankfurt have a free kick. They take it quickly and put the ball straight into Lasaga's feet. It comes to Sigurdsson also making his debut. William Carvalho uh, plays a great free ball towards Herman, he crossed the ball to the far post, but unfortunately, Lasaga's header wasn't going to go in anyway, but Trap makes the save regardless, and it's still 0-0. We're in the 35th minute here, Frankfurt come forward, uh, they play the ball forward, and a very good chance here as the ball is played uh, in towards the box here, nice little 1-2, and unfortunately Cadillac does find the back of the net, so Frankfurt do take the lead, and unfortunately for us, we are behind with 36 minutes on the clock, so a very, very disappointing start really, because we did have the first couple of chances, but unfortunately it was Frankfurt who would have the first goal of the game, but straight from kickoff, we tried to hit back, and we did as well, because it's William Carvalho rolls the ball forward to Yassil here, he takes a touch and blasts the ball into the back of the net but unfortunately the goal is chalked off for offside and correctly so, so good decision by the Lino and it is still 1-0 unfortunately but uh, still 1-0 and it looked like we were on our way to three league defeats in a row here but it's on the 67th minute here, Frankfurt come forward and Rosenthal goes to shoot but thankfully for us Kraft makes a good stop and it's still 1-0 but it did indeed look like we were going to have three league defeats in a row, very frustrating but a few minutes after that Kraft save, round Ramos gets onto the ball, finds William Carvalho, nice little pass forward here, and Gilfie Sigurdsson scores on his debut. So for £2 million, 
I think he's going to be worth every single penny. Great finish by Sigurdsson. Maybe not one of those long-range screamers that uh, he's, he is capable of putting into the back of the net. But even so, a very, very tidy finish there after a great ball by William Carvalho. And it's 1-1 here. So I was determined not to have three league defeats in a row uh, against Dortmund, Wolfsburg, and now Frankfurt. So I was gr uh, very, pre uh, very pleased to be back on all terms. And again, Kraft makes a great save here in the 73rd minute. So we keep the score at 1-1. Fantastic stop by a goalkeeper. And that was how the game finished. So a 1-1 draw. It is three league games without a win. Yes, very worrying indeed, but at least they weren't three league defeats. And I, I'll have to be pleased with the point as well, to be honest, because I think it was a balanced game and it could have gone either way. Frankfurt had a few good chances. We had a few good chances. Kraft played quite well in our goal. So I'll take the point and uh, we need to push on really in February because January and uh, late December has been a bit of a dud run for us, to be honest, in the league. But uh, we'll have to push on in February and hope to get ourselves back on the winning wagon on a regular basis and uh, try, and, try, try and show the teams in this league that we can compete for the Champions League. If not the Europa League, then, uh, sorry, if not the Champions League, then the Europa League at least. But I certainly do want to try for the Champions League. But uh, who knows? Who knows? But after that, um, it was indeed uh, another chance for us to sign a few more players. Uh, we were looking at some loan players as well. And uh, this uh, holding midfielder from Bayer Leverkusen, I just wanted him for cover, really. As you can see, we don't have the money to sign any new players. So with that in mind, I thought I'd try and sign some cover players because we have had a couple of players get down, uh, go down, get injured. Uh, during this uh, this season. I have quite a few players get injured, so uh, some good cover would be gratefully appreciated, but it looks like Vandenberg is on his way to Werder Bremen as well, as we uh, asked him for £2 million pounds instead of £1 million. Pounds. But uh, also this uh, holding midfielder whose name I'll try and pronounce, Oztunal, is that right? Uh, he has indeed accepted the, uh, the the deal to come here, or Oztunali, I'm not sure if that's an I or an L here. But um, yeah, this holding midfielder, only 61 overall. The reason we've got this guy is because he's only 17 years old, and he's going to be just like Zelalem. You know, he comes in on loan, he doesn't really get in the team, but he's the sort of player we can sort of check out, see whether we like him, and if we want to buy him next season, if we, if we like the look of him, then we can go ahead and do so. But otherwise, he'll just sort of sit in our uh, resis, be there for peace of mind as cover and you know not cost us any money you know so I, I think that's I think that's just a perfectly acceptable deal really but uh, after that I also decided to try and sign this uh, right back on a pre-contract deal now of course I said in my uh, PS4 career mode it's always wise to look at uh, the pre-contracts because you can find some bargains and especially in the uh, Brazilian leagues and the Argentine leagues sometimes you can find some good players with low wages but uh, this guy Marcos Roca um, for some reason my scout lost a report on him. He must have like lost the paperwork or accidentally shredded it because I had a full report on this guy until deadline day. And then when I was like, okay, I'll go ahead and sign him, um, the report went. But uh, I know for a fact he's very quick. That's all I can remember. But I know he's a decent player and... Um we go ahead and offer him a contract and we'll have to wait and see what he says but uh, as you can see he accepts the 20 grand a week deal he didn't want the 15 grand a week pay cut but he'll take the 20 grand a week deal and we go ahead and accept him because of course we don't have a proper right back in this club other than the free agent we signed so this guy will come in in uh, in the summer and um, that's pretty good for us and I was, I was really annoyed about that because I've been using the global transfer network and he suddenly just <laughs> my scout just lost every single report so I was really annoyed how that happened I don't know I mean it's my fault I must have done something wrong but even so he He's going to be coming in the sun, which is great. We also loaned out Sprint uh, to a club, and that's fine because he wasn't going to get into our side, and we don't really need him because two goalkeepers is okay. I always like three goalkeepers, but I guess we don't need them. We'll just have two goals at the time being. If we do need to recall him, we can do so. Uh, Ramos is wanted by Southampton, but we said no because, of course, we don't want to get rid of Ramos for such a cheap deal. And that did indeed end transfer deadline day. So quite uneventful, as you would expect, really. But the big moves in the world of football were Ribery going to PSG for 27 million, Manzuka Kitch going uh, to Roma for 16 million and Douglas Costa going to Swansea for 9 million pounds so Bayern Munich having a bit of a clear out there but uh, yeah those were the, uh, the big moves in deadline day and um, there was nothing for us really to do we had no money we'd already signed the two players we wanted in Herman and Sigurdsson so all we could do really was look and sign uh, look, look and see if we can sign a pre-contract player which we did and um, also uh, probably sign a loan player which we also did as well so that would end transfer deadline day uh, here's a look at the squad report as well uh, a reminder, squad reports are shown at the start of every single calendar month, as is the league table, and that is shown in today's episode. I'm sorry I didn't show it in the last calendar month, but I forgot all about it. But it is shown straight after this. So here's a look at the squad report. We're improving it very nicely. We're up to a four-star team now, so we've improved it by half a star. And um, it's looking quite good. We made some good improvements. We're sort of fit in the mould to my liking, you know, because when we came in, uh, you know, the side wasn't really my type of side. But now it's it's got some fast wingers, some clinical strikers, a strong defence, a good goalkeeper. Now it's looking 
more like my team, you know, not the, not the side but we inherited, but my team. So here's a look at the league table, 19 games in, 6th place with 33 points, very happy if we finish here in the Europa League spot, that would be perfectly fine with me, and here is a look at how I've got the squad set up for the rest of the season. It is a 4 star team, we're playing a 4-4-2 diamond wide, so I've changed the formation. So now we can play uh, Herman on the right and Serge Gnabry on the left. Sigurdsson is the attacking mid, William Carvalho is the holding mid, and the side is looking a lot stronger as we go on. But as always guys, a big thank you for watching the video, I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the video, please leave a like, and I'll see you for the next episode of my next-gen career mode very soon.